Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Jack. Today we're building a Lego Star Wars set. This is Octu Island Training. The set's recommended for ages 7 to 12. It is set number 75200 and it has 241 pieces. Included are two minifigs. We've got Luke Skywalker and Rey, both with exclusive printing as well as a Porg. The main bit of the build is Luke's hut or one of the huts from the island. And I think this is one of the more sought after last Jedi sets to come from the second wave. All right, there's not too many pieces in this set, so uh, it shouldn't be too hard to get it open and built. So the build took just under half an hour to complete, which is about right at my pace at least, considering the part count. And I have to say that I definitely liked the build for the hut a lot more than I was expecting to. I'm gonna get into the details of the hut in just a second, but we have to check out the minifigs first because Luke Skywalker is probably my favorite new Star Wars minifig from this year. So just about everything you see on this minifigure is exclusive just to this Luke, just from this set. And I have a feeling it's gonna be remaining that way. You can see the main detailing on the body shows some Jedi robes with the belt. I like the detailing for the collar in particular, and of course there is uh, the print that goes onto the back of the torso as well. All the printing itself looks good, it looks fine I would say, but really the two things that I think are going to get collectors excited are the new pieces, A, that make up the cape, that is a soft cloth cape, and a new cut. The holes are spaced out a little bit more, which means you're going to get a nice sort of looping uh, or wrapping around the shoulders effect, and the hair piece, so far, once again, is exclusive just to Luke. As you can imagine, they fit the character just right because of course they're designed for Luke, but I really do like that Lego is sort of keeping up with sort of an unofficial tradition where they often produce parts that are brand new to Lego minifigures specifically for the release of a certain Star Wars character in a set. I'm sure we're gonna be seeing this cut of cape shape as well as hair mold for Lego minifigures in the future, but we first see it here. Excellent expressions, can't say enough good things about the Luke minifigure figure in general, and I have a feeling he's going to be relatively collectible in a few years. Now, Ray is also exclusive to this set, and I have a feeling the prints on the body are probably going to remain that way, just because I doubt she's going to be wearing the same thing come the third movie. They're probably going to be dressing the characters up a little bit differently throughout the franchise. That sort of makes sense, so it would make sense that these prints remain just on this Ray minifig from this set. She looks a little bit more clean cut with the clothes that she's got on. You can see a vest with like a wrapping shirt and some pants and buckles and things like that, which I think is sort of a step up from sort of the rags or robes that she was wearing on Jakku. Same expressions for the face, same mold for the hair, of course, and she comes with two different uh, weapons. She's got her staff as well as Luke's lightsaber. Luke and Rey are two very solid minifigs, probably some of the best figs that we're getting from this particular wave of Last Jedi sets. And then the last minifig, quote unquote, to come in this set is the Porg. It's a brick built Porg, very similar or pretty much the exact exact same build that we got from the uh, Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon, though they did change up some of the coloration for uh, just, I guess, the feathers or the markings on this particular Porg. The chest is white now instead of gray, and the wings are dark gray instead of black, that I think that was the uh, that was the case on the Millennium Falcon. So technically, this is an exclusive release for the little guy, and whether or not you 
feel good or bad about Porgs, I generally like the way that this guy was built up. Now let's move on to the set itself. This is Luke's hut. Now initially the first thing that I noticed is that the build that shows the stone hut is quite different from how it actually looks in the movie. Just sort of the way it was constructed is very unique from the movie. And I'm not sure if the designers uh, were really trying to capture the exact sort of architecture style, so to speak. So they kind of did a little bit of creative liberty on the shape of the hut itself. And I think it works out pretty well. First thing to point out is that the hut is modular. We've got two Technic pinholes on three sides with two different parts that can kind of break off on either side. And then of course you can take the roof off, but that's more of just like an easy access thing to get into the interior. You can mix and match the plate pieces, but for now I'm just gonna put them back because I wanna turn this thing around, check out the inside because there's a lot more functions and interactivity than I was initially expecting. First off, I'd like to say that there's a lot of detailing and it really does make this thing look like it's lived in. You can see there's a space for Luke to sleep. There's a bed there. You kind of have to lift his cape up if you want him to lay down, but then you can fold the entire bed up in order to get a little bit more space to navigate the inside. This little modified plate sort of allows you to pull off this top area and on the inside, I think that's food storage, maybe a waste bin. I think it is food storage though. There's some sour cherries or green cherries in there. You can set the frying pan there. It doesn't really look like a stove. I thought it might have actually been a reading spot before because that looks like a little torch or lamp. And when moving these parts around, uh, I actually knocked off a little piece there. That's an action function, which allows you to blow a little piece of the wall out. That's a reference to a particular scene from the movie. And I'll show you how that works uh, maybe a little bit later. But on the other side of the hut, there are a few things here that look really nice. You can see some food and some food storage, I guess. We have a fish in the basket. Clipped to the wall is one of those little wheat pieces. I think that's a, a wheat piece or a sprout piece in brown. And then we have something in black in the bucket. Honestly, I thought that was a toilet at first. I don't know what it is, but there are some black studs in that little uh, upside down sort of half circle brown piece. I don't know the name of that part. And then when you turn the set around, you get a better look at this sort of half circle fire pit that we have. A little bit tough getting one minifig in on one side of the fire. He gets a little bit too close, I think. But I appreciate those longer curved tile pieces. They're becoming a lot more common these days. And then the second semi-modular piece that we have on the other side of the hut shows a different spot. This is sort of where Ray is training with her lightsaber. And there is another, just, you know, another small action function where she can be stood on this little rotating circular piece. And she spins around and knocks the, uh, knocks the giant stone over. Now on the inside, we do have a crystal. I'm going to assume it's a kyber crystal. And you can try to set up the uh, situation where it'll knock this thing in half, but really you have to kind of break the rock open completely and just sort of loosely rest that uh, second piece on the top because there's no way you're going to be knocking it off by pure force. Not the way it's set up right now. It's a decent enough function though. And I'd also like to point out right in the front, we have another soft cloth piece that's used as sort of the uh, covering for the front door. I couldn't find that particular cut listed on Bricklink. So I do have a feeling that is also a new cloth shape cut as well, exclusive to the set. Once again, so far exclusive. Also, if I zoom out a little bit, here is that function I mentioned earlier. The trigger activation is very simple and it pops off nicely and is easy to reset. This here is a closer look at the modular top of the roof. You can see these are where most of the sticker detailings end up. And then just on the inside, we have this new part. I think it's new. It's a longer brick piece on top, sort of two by six on top. And then we've got some slopes that come down on the side. The chimney has sort of an area where you can rest a minifig, assuming you can keep the minifig in there without them falling out. And that is basically anything and everything that comes comes within this hut build. And honestly, it's quite a lot. It doesn't look like there's a lot of things you can do just sort of uh, on the surface, just looking at it from the outside, but there's a ton of interactivity on the interior and you can set up quite a few of the key scenes from the film based on some of the little builds on the outside and a couple of the action functions. My final thoughts are that uh, I think this is probably gonna be one of the most popular sets to come from the last Jedi wave. It's got Luke, it's the only set with Luke Skywalker and Luke looks really really good. There's some new exclusive parts for him. It also comes with an exclusive Ray. How about that? The uh, hero of the story. And considering it comes with a lot of uh, new and kind of unique parts with the set, I'm going to say that, yeah, it's it's popular for a reason. And the $30 price point seems uh, seems pretty fair considering what you get. All right, so that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.